Well, hello there. Welcome. It's Ashley from Lovely Commotion. I am coming to you this Sunday to talk all about letters. I love letters. Um, well, the alphabet kind. Well, actually, I love the letters that come in the mail too because it's better than bills, right? But I think this is because I'm just not a very good math girl and I really excelled at reading and writing. And so I really do love letters and letters the alphabetic kind, um, they play a big role in preschool. And it seems like everybody's wanting them to know their letters. Um, parents, for sure, right? Um, the kindergarten teachers that they're going to have next year, the administrators, they all want them to know their letters. And while I, too, want my children to know their letters in our state, um, it's not necessary for children to know all 26 before they go to kindergarten. That's actually something that is a kindergarten skill. So I don't feel like pushing and pushing and pushing letters is the best practice for us where we live. And so as much as I want them to know them, I will never ever use flashcards to do this. I, I just don't believe in that way of learning. And these skills are academic skills and they are a drill and practice, just memorized type of skills when we're talking about learning letters and letter sounds. And while they're absolutely foundational, right? They are, we can't really um, work on reading without knowing our letters. They are foundational, but they're not the only thing. There's so many great things that go into literacy and reading and writing that are that do have letters as a part of them, of course, but it's not the only thing. And so when I teach my children letters and we really work on letters, I try to do it in the most play-based way as possible because that is the way God made them. Um, we want to have fun while playing with letters. We want to connect to letters. And so first and foremost, I always make sure that I am presenting letters in a way that's meaningful to them. So I make sure that we are first focusing on their letters, their first letter. And so if I had 10 kids, we're looking at basically 10 letters um, for, for a long while. This is, you know, this is B, this is Ben's letter, right? B is for Ben and the B says, right? So we talk about all these great things about their letter. And the reason why that is so important to me to base it off of meaningful, meaningful experience or person or thing, right? Is because that's what they relate to. If I decided that I was going to cover certain letters in a certain order, and these were the letters I chose, they may not be ready for those letters then. They're not meaningful to them. They want something that they can connect to and their name is super powerful. And so we always start with those letters that start their name and then move into some letters that the class has shared in common, right? Like we, we, many of us have an A, many of us have an O and we can start talking about those. But this is the way I approach letter learning in preschool. And I know it feels very out of control to do it this way because it feels like, well, what if I miss something? What if I, you know, I didn't provide the opportunity for that. But I also think that sometimes even when we do provide the opportunity for that, they weren't ready to learn them. We didn't connect it to something important to them. And so I find even though I am not drilling, practicing my children and, and worrying constantly about letter learning, they're still learning them and they are gaining them every time I do an assessment. And so I know that it's working, right? And I know I can feel better about the fact that I know we're doing it in a way that's best for kids. Um, we're not pushing them. We are not drill and practice flashcarding them because that this is, you know, one of their first learning experiences in a structured environment and they've got a lot of years to go. And so I don't want them to dislike learning and dislike the idea of school. And because in our state, we are not, they are not required to know all 26 letters of her lower and their sounds, I feel like I have a little bit more wiggle room to give them that growing time, that time to develop an interest in letters. And usually this interest explodes with majority of my children after Christmas and as spring is starting to start. It just explodes and it amazes me, just their interest and their love. 
but I've also given them that room to grow. And so today I want to share with you some alphabet activities that we do do. And we like to do it in a very playful way. But I tell you all this because when I do these activities, I choose the letters that we use based on where we are. If we are at the beginning of the year, I am using their first letters only. Um, so if I have a Bob, I'm going to use a B. And if I have a Gabby, I'm going to use a G. And if I have an Ashley, I'm going to use an A. And if I have a Mackenzie, I'm going to use an M, right? Those are letters I'm going to focus on because those letters are important and I connect them back to them. This is your letter. They take really big pride in that. And then maybe later on in the year, if they've kind of understood these letters, gotten these letters, recognizing these letters, we're going to move more into the sounds that they make. And then we're going to move into more of the letters that they share, right? Look, you both have an A and we look at the letters. You have this many letters and we really just go into a lot of that. But I, I want to tell you that because when I do these activities, I never put out all 26 letters to do an activity. It, one, it'll just take too long and, and they will just lose interest. And losing interest is never my goal and never something I want to happen because then it means that um, they aren't learning and they are probably not enjoying the experience. So I want it to be a time of fun and playfulness while also learning. So I tell you that just to preface this to say that when we do these activities, I do not use all 26 letters. Um, I use certain letters that I have chosen. I also will use later letters later in the year after I've done my assessments and just kind of cross-referencing which letters more as a group that they're having trouble with because you find that over the years, there's certain letters um, that they really struggle knowing and you can kind of predict those letters, but then also see if there's any patterns in the classroom. And so I have a tool that I kind of created because I was in a loss of like, how do I find out which letters my class as a whole group um, needs the most practice in. I, I wanted that information, but I didn't want to have to like, you know, go through it manually. And so I created like this data collector that um, I use in Adobe Reader and it does it kind of for me when I put in which letters. So kind of tallies up like this many kiddos didn't know this letter, this many kiddos didn't know this letter. So then I can make informed decisions on which letters that I'm pulling. And so I'll Definitely put a link to that because it's just a free free thing that you can try out yourself if you're finding that you're wanting to know which letters as a whole. Because when it comes to whole group, I want to make it as meaningful as possible and, and practice the letters that we really need, right? Not the ones that we maybe don't. So anyway, today I have some activities to share with you. There are eight of them. And these activities I do during circle time or during whole group, or you could definitely even do them when maybe you have a little extra time and, and you're kind of waiting, or maybe you're, some of them could even be done if you're like waiting in the hallway for, for the bathroom to open up or something like that. Um, some of them are very um, useful in that way, but I tried to make these something that could be done quick. I just wanted for myself, I wanted a list of hey, we could just grab this real fast, right? We could try this real fast. And it's not going to take me a lot of tools that maybe I don't already have. And, and many of these, actually almost all of these, I have already right next to me in my circle time area in um, a little organizer there. So I wanted to go through these with you, but also just wanted to make sure you knew that I definitely don't do all 26 letters when doing this. I choose them very purposefully and... Um, try my very best to make sure that we are covering the letters that are most important to them, relatable to them, and the ones that they actually need help with. So the first game, and I'll show you these two. So um, these are just my letter cards that I use. They have the upper and the lower right there on the same letter, and they have a picture to help with the sound and also for the visual learners who can connect that jelly with a J. And so these I have available with the list of activities for free in my TPT store. So you can go ahead and grab that. I'll put a link there too. But many of these, you can even like take them in and kind of twist the game a little bit to create a new game of your own. But these are just kind of a simple list of things that you can do with very limited amount of things. So basically I just have my letter cards and a couple other uh, props that I use. 
So the first one is surprise letters. And so I'll take the letters that I'm choosing to work on. And for this game, I usually try to do um, one letter for each student so they all can have a turn pulling it out. So if I have 10 children, I'm going to ten, choose 10 letters that we need to practice. And I either get a bucket or um, just even a gift bag would work just fine and put those down in there. And we go around and we pull out a letter and show it to the class and we, and this is one exciting part. I let them during this game yell out in the classroom. Anytime we don't yell too often in the classroom, um, just out of respect for those around us. But this was, this is one where we get to yell out the letter and then yell out the sound. And it's really so super simple, but it's just putting the letters in a bag and making it more of a surprise. I also like to do this, um, at the very end of circle time because I will dismiss children into, we have a restroom in the room and dismiss them in there to go wash their hands. And I like to do it kind of slower so that um, there isn't a bottleneck at the bathroom, but this could also be used in the hallway. It could be used as um, maybe an exit game or an exit, you know, as you leave the room, grab a letter, tell me what it, tell me what it is and what, what sound it makes or something like that. So just super easy, but instead of saying, name this letter, what is this? We're putting it in a bag and making it a surprise. And so that makes it way more engaging because kids love surprises. Another one we do is um, the alphabet hunt and hunting, scavenger hunting, such a fun thing, right? So I will hide however many letters there are kids around the room and I will tell them go find one letter and when you find one letter come back and so they're searching all over the room and I love that it's getting them up and moving and um, definitely engaging because they love a hunt right and so then they all come back and we talk about the letter that they found and then we try to connect that letter back to something either you know their names family members names things that we've done in our classroom, things like that. So that's an easy one too. Just, you're just hiding letters. And generally I, I just do it right there. I have them hide their eyes and say, I'm going to hide letters, hide your eyes. And then I go around the classroom and hide, hide them. It takes me like a minute, right? And um, super fun activity if you just have a little extra time. We also play smack a letter. And this one of course is fun because you get to use a fly swatter. And who doesn't love a fly swatter? Um, back a couple of years ago, Dollar Tree had some that like looked like bugs, bees and, and ladybugs and stuff. And they were super fun. And I had them and they broke because they were well loved. But I will choose letters that I want to work on and place them on the carpet. And or if you want to work on them smacking more like this, you could hang them on the wall or write them on a whiteboard or whatnot. But basically, um, each child gets a turn and I'll call out a letter or its sound, whatever you think, because you can kind of, you can kind of judge that based on each kiddo of what you want to work on. And they go up and try to find that letter and smack it. And if they miss it, they can ask for a friend to help them. And it's just a fun way to recognize letters or recognize letter sounds. So they're not necessarily naming them. So this is always a good one to do when, um, before maybe some of the letter naming is happening and so they can start visualizing this is what the letter v looks like and so smacking that with a fly swatter just makes it 10 times more fun because i don't know about you but i can't ever catch the fly to fly, smack it with fly swatter so smacking a letter is also fun um that's the third one the fourth one is missing letter and this one I like to do with letters they either already know really well or are almost, you know, in mastery of. And I'll lay out about, I start with three. I start with three letters. I lay them out on the floor. Or you can put them in a pocket chart, whichever. And I lay them out and I have, and we, we point each one and we say what they are, right? Oh, here's the L. The L says, ooh. Here's the T. The T says T. And we talk about each one of them. And then I have them hide their eyes and I hide one behind my back and they have to tell me which one is missing. So not only are they having to use their memory, which is um, good practice right there, but they're also having to recall which letters were there. And so we'll play that. And then sometimes if they get really good at it, we'll add a fourth letter. And if they get really good at that, which in the past they sometimes have, I will grab two of the letters and see if they can remember which ones were sitting there. So just kind of a fun way to bring in some letter practice. 
missing letter. Another super fun one takes just a puppet and you probably have those sitting around. This Clifford one is good because his mouth is pretty big, but here he is right here. And you can create, you can basically ask for, so you put out some letters on the carpet area and one child, you ask them for the letter. You could either say, feed Clifford the V or feed Clifford the letter that says, or feed Clifford, um, the letter that has, um, a big curve, maybe you have one D in there and they could identify that. You could basically make it anything, any characteristic of that letter that you want. Feed Clifford, um, the one that starts like violin and, you know, then they can look at the picture, right? And just really depends. And you can change the question based on where that kiddo is in their letter journey, but they'll come and they will feed it to Clifford. And if they're right, he will go. Nom, 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 nom. And if they're wrong, which they absolutely love this, you will spit it out and they crack up. And many times they will hand you the wrong letter because it's super fun. And so you'll say, is that the right letter? Do we want to feed that to Clifford? And so it creates a lot of engagement because you can ask, you can ask the whole class, is that the right letter? Do you think Clifford's going to like it? Let's see. And then, oh, Clifford didn't like it. You were right. That wasn't the right letter. Let's see if we can find the right letter and just kind of getting them back on track. But they absolutely adore being able to feed any puppet really I have a frog one too, but any puppet because it just adds that element of fun. And then of course, adding the spinning out just is hilarious in preschool world. So another fun way to bring some letter learning in. Um, another one, hopping letters. This one I like because it's got some gross motor in it. Um, I'll tape down, like I usually just use, um, oh, pager's tape, you know, and I will tape down the letters on the floor of the ones I want them to work on and I'll do them like in a line. And so we all just get up and we stand in a line and we hop on each letter and we say the letter as we go through. And so again, a fun way to just practice naming letters. We could even do sounds that way. And, um, but they're moving and they are looking and they are hopping. I mean, lots of good stuff going on there that makes it more engaging than just naming the letter card. Another one is bean bags. All my bean bags are at school, so I didn't have one, but I like to use this one too. We're working on throwing. So another great gross motor skill, but I lay out, um, cards on the floor and I usually do the same amount that I have children and we take turns throwing the bean bag and whichever letter the bean bag lands closest to, it doesn't always land on it, but whichever one it lands closest to, they grab it and we talk about the letter name and letter sound. And then I take that one away and then the next child goes and just adds an element of fun because they can kind of choose which one they want to go after. But um, it's working on the uh, throwing towards a goal, right? They're trying to get it on something. So that's an added benefit to that as well. You could even, if, if they're getting really good at it, you could even maybe call out a letter or call out a letter sound and see if they can try to hit it with the bean bag. That's another variation. Lots of ways that you can use these with just either naming letters, recognizing letters, naming sounds, recognizing sounds, like so many great things. Even characteristics of letters, ones with, with um, curves, one with straight lines, one with little lines, all those type of things. And the last one is guess my letter. And so I will pull a letter and obviously it's one that I have pre-chosen that we will use and I don't show it to the class and I start beginning, uh, I start naming things that start with that letter. And so at first, this is pretty tricky. So at first, when I do guess my letter, I generally just do the sound and um, see where we are on that. And then if they get it, I reveal it and we all celebrate and kiss our brains and make a big deal out of it because it is a big deal. They're, they're learning some, some big letter skills. And then later we can move on to, um, I have a B hidden and, and I tell them it starts like bat, ball, bus, bunny, and see if we can start connecting those two. Um, that's obviously a little bit harder of a skill. So you can, you can basically make these what you want them to be, but just by adding simple props and excitement from you, um, you can take letter learning and just make it a little more fun. And these are short games. These are not meant to be something 
um, extended, uh, the most it's going to take is the amount of time it takes each child to either like smack a letter or feed a letter to the puppet or jump on a letter. So we want to keep these short and sweet. So that's why they're great for just kind of pulling out when you need them or, you know, even planning them in. But all those are there. All the letter cards and the letter idea list is there for you. Obviously, there are so many endless ideas. And if you have a favorite for something you play as a whole group for letters, please drop it in the comments. I know we all love just new ideas and keeping things fresh because that's what helps um, keep them interested in learning and, and not become mundane and not fun because not fun equals generally a dislike and then the dislike turns into not wanting to learn. So we want to keep that love of learning alive. So hope that these were helpful. Super simple. Hopefully something you can just take and use tomorrow. Grab some alphabet cards from your classroom if you have your own ready and try out one of these games. So let me know if you found this helpful and if you have any ideas yourself. Have a great Sunday, guys. I'll see ya.